Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thanks for being here, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to go through our progress to date. I'm here with my colleagues, uh, Deirdre Ryan from Mary Mackler College, and Michael Ryan, no relation, from LIT. Um, and our other colleagues, as you'll hear during our presentation, are actually engaging in teaching on the pilot element of what we're doing, so I'll, I'll make their apologies, but that's what they're actually doing today. So our project is all about enhancing teaching and learning through a regionally accredited program. And what we're doing is we're aligning and enhancing a recently developed, as in it's in its first year of iteration, we're just at the final stage this week in a summer school, um, of a new graduate diploma, an MA in teaching, learning and scholarship in higher education to the needs of the three partner institutions within the consortium. So we have um, the University of Limerick, University, uh, and Mary I at, that, at uh, representing universities, and then we have LIT from an, uh, um, an institution of technology context. So we have different contexts to work within. So you're all familiar with this, so I won't go through it again. We took a lot of this on board when we were developing the programme in the first instance last year. So we did a whole programme review on, our, on an, an existing programme, and we reviewed it and looked through focus groups and everything. But what we've done in relation to this particular project is we're looking at the innovation, and innovative pedagogy and assessment, we're looking at new module offerings in relation to the context and needs of different institutions, and we're also looking at the need for recognised prior learning guidelines and ways of assessing that for entrance into the programme, particularly a programme that we're all looking at here today, which is for um, people, a level nine programme where we're looking at um, teachers in higher education. So our students are actually our colleagues. So that's where it's a little bit um, more complex, I suppose. So what we're actually doing, this is it in a, a graphic. Um, collaborative planning is part of what the Channel Consortium has been doing for the last 10 years and we're delighted to say that. Um, so we're literally looking at the stakeholder needs analysis is literally completed, as in, I'd say, two weeks ago across the three institutions. Um, we're also scoping out recognised prior learning within the consortium and within the Irish context and we've looked abroad as well to our international colleagues in CEDA to see what's happening there as well. Our aim around innovative pedagogy assessment and provision was again to plan this provision across the three contexts at three different institutions and look at what's required and find out what our faculty, our peers, our potential students really need in this regard. So bearing in mind the whole idea of technology enhanced learning and the idea of an e-portfolio and developing e-portfolio around um, the assessment element of it. And the modules that we identified initially in our initial discussions around this and our initial um, piloting of it was the idea of leadership in education was something that we saw was missing and sustainability in that regard um, and human development. Internationalisation and inclusive education again seemed to be very much at the forefront with our UK colleagues but not necessarily something we were looking at in our programme. So that's really where, where our, our image of what we're actually about. So while we've um, come to date and what we're at, we've gained ethical approval for the project for the three institutions. We've communicated the overall project to our key st stakeholders. So again, that was management, that was potential students, that was our current faculty, um, that was postgraduates. Um, we completed six focus groups, so two in each institution with the key stakeholders, to establish what their needs are. So as I said, our faculty are our students, so it's, you know, there, there's two roles there. We also had um, management in there in terms of what management felt, deans and heads of department around what their expectations and requirements for a programme like this would be. In terms of recognised prior learning, this is just Pandora's box in terms of what's there and what's not there and how it's managed and how people interpret the guidelines that they have in each institution. So we're scoping that through. We've engaged with the National Forum, our sponsored uh, recognised prior learning network. We're very much comparing. We sent out a, a request to our colleagues in CEDA through their JISC mail around what it, what's happening, you know, what are institutions doing. And the University of Sheffield has a very interesting model that we're looking at, as does the University of Central Lancashire. Um, so we're looking at both of those at the moment. They're much more lengthy pro processes than we thought. You know, it's, it's, you know in, in Sheffield, we're talking four or five months for somebody to get accreditation before they get on a programme. So it's quite a long wait for some people. So we're looking at, at that, and the, the difficulty is around the experiential learning rather than the, you know, the certified learning. So you know, certified is quite easy to map, it's the experiential learning, that's where we're, we're grappling, and that's where we're just at that fact-finding stage. And we're hoping to draft these in universal sector guidelines so that people in different institutions across the sector can say, okay, we could adapt these for our institution in relation to a similar type programme that we're running. 
Curriculum development, we have two prongs to this, and we've done two pilots per se, if you like, in relation to what we're about. The first is around the, um, the aligning the, the professional development framework for people coming in at um, an 18 credit certificate level. Okay, so they've completed 18 credits, they needed to up their credits to 30 credits to qualify with a specialist diploma. In that regard, they came on a 12 credit module that was run over four months of weekends, so four weekends if you like, and they completed two portfolios, one in a group where they looked at a particular topic and a challenge that challenged them in their work. And they worked on a group project bearing in mind the model of reflective practice and evidence-based learning and reflection that's in the um, National Development Plan. Um, um, they're literally submitting um, individual portfolios last week and the rest of the group portfolios are next week. Um, our colleagues then um, from HR and from our own Centres for Teaching and Learning are delivering today um, as part of a pilot of a 12 credit module for a 60 credit programme which is this graduate diploma. These um, colleagues are working on, I can show it here anyway in a minute, I can show it, yeah. Um, they're working on international inclusive education, they're looking at sustainable education and human development and they're looking at leadership and education. So I'm teaching on Friday in terms of international inclusive education. Um, my colleague Martin Fitzgerald is teaching sustainable education and human development with Angelica Rieskaist um, tomorrow and then our colleagues from Mary I are teaching leadership and education today. This has been a collaborative um, event through liaising together in developing the content for those themes and those themes were formed part of a much bigger um, week I suppose. So I'll, I'll show you the overall structure if you'll forgive me for separating through. So the, the module we called it Contemporary Issues in Higher Education and this was around looking at relevant pedagogies and themes that are really interested, interesting to people teaching in higher education and really exploring a variety of strategies to engage the experiences in different contexts. So the schedule for the week is as such. So um, we have Professor Norman Jackson from the UK who was over in the initial plan anyway outside of working with us on this particular module um, to coordinate the week. Okay, and we're all giving our inputs into that. So in that, you can see, you know, we have national forum in there in terms of um, what the national development framework were. And each of the afternoons, the individuals are working on their own creative portfolio development. So their professional web page around what they're doing, where their challenges are, what innovations they're engaging with, along the themes that have been identified in the morning. So that's how that week is, is structured. And that's just a pilot of what we've been um, doing this, this week. I want to go back, apologies now. Uh, focus group themes then came through, and as I say, we ran six focus groups across three institutions. And interestingly, what we had predicted to come up maybe didn't come up as strongly as we thought, and other themes came up much stronger. So you can see skill development, teaching, and learning was very much at the forefront, and again, that aligns very much with the professional development framework. Ethics and professionalism in there as well, in relation to really how do, we, how do we draw the lines, how do we work the boundaries, our disciplines are very different and taking into account the different disciplines that we're looking at because we don't teach to disciplines very much like um, the previous project, you know, bringing in the specific disciplines wasn't something that we had looked at and we used the experience of the participants on a programme to explore how they apply things in different disciplines rather than us talking about how you might do it in STEM or how you might do it in arts or what have you and then the, the pedagogy is different in the different contexts. That's dealt with very well in this pilot and the, I've met a couple of the participants yesterday and they were saying it's going really well in, in relation to just exploring how they're engaging their own discipline and pedagogy in a much more creative way. So again, that was only two days in, so let's see. Um, in terms of the resources came up as, a, as an issue for, for focus groups. Really, you know, the blended idea of, of the previous project sounds very interesting to me. Um, workload and time and space is a, is a major um, concern for people embarking on a programme like this very much because in the, in the ITs, for example, you're talking 17 or 18 contact hours, so where is the time for managing their own you know, CPD? Um, and fees, you know, that's an issue for sustainability. Who's going to fund this? Where are the resources going to come to for this? So that's something we need to consider, and that's on our agenda. The role of RPL is something that's come through as well from the current students on the programme. How can their own experience, particularly in scholarship, be acknowledged and accredited in relation to the scholarship modules on the programme. And that's something that we have to look at. So how can we give credit to people, their own experience and their own writing? How can we give credit to them 
and exemptions potentially in relation to that when they're you know experienced academics perhaps so there are two things that came up around recognized prior learning that we are exploring um, and the panel feedback from previous um, meetings in, in December the three key themes that we saw coming through that panel feedback and again you can correct me if I've misinterpreted anything um, engagement was something that came up you know how will we get people to engage with this program so what we have worked towards in that regard is that it's a structured CPD process across the, the consortium. All it's open to everyone, um, and it's designed in a way that it meets the needs of each each um, institution rather than just what we pres presume it to be. If we were to just go with what we presume it to be, the week that we've just run would be it forever. Whereas we were piloting out how that's going and how that structure might work, just in terms of a taster. Um, there has been interinstitutional collaboration across the project in, in all its, its forms and we have regular meetings every every month we sit down and work through where we're at and what the next stage is. Um, there's three exit points of the programme, you have a certificate, a graduate diploma and a master's. So you can exit with a certificate at 21 credits, you can exit with a graduate diploma at 60 credits or you can exit with a master's at 90 credits. Um, again, you know, it may be that there will be a requirement and depending on how these our first full cohort come out, it may be that they want to spread it over longer periods of time. Maybe they do want to do it over two years rather than a calendar year. I don't know. Um, initially, with the current cohort, we had expected, we had an initial cohort of 16. There are now 11 continuing on to graduate diploma masters. So it's interesting that we had initially thought, well, they go for the quick fix of 21 credits. But actually, once they got involved in it and engaged in the, in the process and the discipline, the, the network that they developed, that has changed. Um, engagement with the national development um, framework through enhancement. We're sharing experience all of the time with our students and with our faculty, and that's something that's key to how that type of a programme works, that all of the, the experience and the networking that goes on outside of the classroom is hugely important. Um, and the new content and approach is very much what's, what we're piloting this week around innovative pedagogy and using an e-portfolio and you know, their own website development to, to kind of capture their career to date and to map it to where they fit on the, the national development um, framework. And then finally in relation to evaluation and sustainability, <coughs> we're looking at building capacity in teaching and learning across the consortium but not just in our own local region, we're talking across the, the sector and um, we're using our own local region as representative, if you like, um, economies of scale as well, that we won't be producing three different programmes, we have one programme that everyone can link into and that's very important for us. Um, evaluation of impact, I'm going to go to the, how am I for time, Terry? Oh yeah, okay. Um, we've used Duffel Bean very much to direct us, but this is what we've come out with in terms of what um, the National Forum have asked us to, to look at. It was quite difficult to look to put on the fortune teller glasses and say, what will the impact be in 18 months? And I, I had a mini panic attack going, how will I predict all of this? But actually we came up, we had a great discussion around it and looked, well actually, there's so many impacts we can see already. But again, we need to be much more explicit around how we're going to measure those um, rather than, you know, anecdotally, maybe like I'm saying, oh, well, yesterday was a great experience for students. We need to really, really capture it. So the direct impact of CPD across the consortium, the reports of improvement, people's self-esteem, people's sense of confidence and validation in their, process, in their profession is hugely something that we see all of the time and we need to look at measuring that maybe more explicitly. Um, collaboration, collaboration around um, projects and presentations, not just for us, but also for our participants. They're already engaged in working cross-disciplinary already in their projects. And I think that's very exciting to see disciplines working together. And I think that can happen across the, the institutions also. Self-reported, obviously, improvement on the repertoire of teaching skills. That's something really important to everybody on the programme, but also for us as um, collaborators on something like this. We want to make sure that people can see the, the outcome of what their efforts have been. The impact then on the learning and the learners. Flexibility of pathways. That's... I think the crux of what it's, what it's all about, making sure that there's access there, that it is inclusive, that everybody can gain access to this if they want. And the, the prior learning is really where all of that comes together and making sure that we do recognise not just the accredited programmes but the experiential because when you are talking about faculty at level nine, we're talking about people who may have 20 years experience. I have three faculty members on the programme at the moment with 20 years experience each. One of them is a head of department. So we have to acknowledge their experiential side of things as well. Um, 
Organisational practices, again, you know, the whole idea of the, the RPL. Sustainable practices around development of pedagogy and curriculum is hugely important to us, that we're capturing what's required. For example, example in, in LIT might be very different to what's required um, in our institution and again in Mary I. So we're talking about three very different contexts and how we might meet the needs and the, the, the content needs that are coming through. So, for example, in LIT, there was a lot of focus around, you know, we need to have pedagogy for different types of disciplines. Whereas in the university, that wasn't something that the students reported at all or something that they were concerned about. Um, the enhancement and sustainability, again, this is where we're going to have a lot of discussion again, the whole idea of international policy. We need to link into international policy. We need to look at processes in terms of the scholarship of teaching and learning. We're talking um, with Ruth Pilkington at the moment around the recognised prior learning and the scholarship around what she's done in that regard, but also um, in relation to people publishing in the area. And finally then, um, to develop the collaborative framework beyond the time frame. So again, we're back to sustainability. We're again back to the awful um, words like money and time and resources and those kind of things that we will need to pin down and we need to be very clear with our own um, human resource departments. We're going to have to be very clear in terms of CPD and graduate studies around how that comes together. So at that point, I'd like to thank you for your time and apologies if I went over. Thank you.